What's up guys, Derek, moreplates.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about Paul Sklar coming for the fake netty detectives, haters, and naysayers. He posted this uh, a couple weeks ago, and I don't know if he deleted it, but I could not find the original post. This was, was the post. Him saying, how many of you thought my testosterone would be off the chart based on my fitness level and physique at age 50? Testosterone results from my annual physical this past August. Tur August. Turns out I'm just average. Enjoy. I don't do steroids, HGH, SARMs, TRT, or any other PED, and I never have. If you think that's how I got here, you were mistaken and misinformed. Share with someone who thinks it's impossible to have my physique at age 50. Fucking grunting, panting, sniffing simultaneously, concurrently at the same time, bro. Total testosterone, adult male, 5.94 nanograms per milliliter. It's understandable why people give him a hard time. Like, look at these fucking traps, dude. Absurd. Uh, look at this transformation. Absurd. Looking nuts. But getting back to the blood work, this is the main thing we're talking about here. 594 nanograms per milliliter, or 5.94, 594 nanograms per deciliter. At the end of the day, he does not show anything else that's useful, un unfortunately. So he's using this as confirmation of his natural status. Um, you know, how many people would assume that I have a fucking 1500 because I look like Adonis? You know, a lot of people actually probably would assume that because there's a big misconception around what goes into testosterone levels and how reliant you are on them to get a high quality physique. Like we did a video the other day with uh, Hamza, he basically talked about how he wants more tests. His test level is around like 500 or something. And he talks about how like Giga Chad has the best test level. So he's like the leader of the pack and he's, you know, the most attractive, you know, genetically fucking blessed, most like, I don't know, fertile individual who women will want to have sex with and, you know, reproduce with. Like he basically highlights the importance of testosterone and makes it seem like if you're not on the high end of the reference range, you're fucked. Like the literal thing he says is this. 14.7. That converts to 440. See, like look at the range, bro. If you're not at the upper end of the range, you have low testosterone. If you're not at the upper end of the range, you have low testosterone, which this should be symptom related. At the end of the day, androgen receptor content, gene expression is what's going to dictate what actually happens in the body and your transient serum levels are kind of just arbitrary numbers on a piece of paper as a proxy for your endocrine status. So if you have a 500 nanogram per deciliter total, that's how much your balls have spit out into circulation. You have freely circulating around in your bloodstream, but it doesn't mean that if you have, you know, poor response at the AR or like lack of the response elements being elicited by the androgen receptor binding to the um, androgen and causing transcriptional activity, you're going to have less muscle building, less, you know, all the things that come from testosterone, you might have less than the next guy who has a 1000 total simply by your genetic predisposition. So the number on a piece of paper at the end of the day is just a reference point and a proxy. And in a lot of cases, guys who are on the low end of the reference range will simply do not have enough androgen receptor signaling that they're going to experience like adequate, you know, physiologic functional support. But you could still, have, there are so many guys who have normal as fuck looking levels, like 500, 600, who have way better physiques than guys who are 900, 1,000, 1,100, you know? Like I know plenty of individuals after, over the years, I've seen, you know, wildly different ranges of examples. Some people over 1,000, some people as low as like fucking, you know, 400. And some of the guys, you know, closer to 400 have better physiques than the guys who are at like, you know, 1,100. It's not necessarily indicative of muscle building potential. Obviously, there is a difference in a dose dependent manner of testosterone administration with muscle building potential. But at the end of the day, your genetics compared to the next guy, like the reason you're not as jacked as, you know, fill in the blank guy. Like, I don't know. I use Lex Little as a good example because he's someone who had average as fuck test levels and is often accused of being a fake natty. You know, that guy him if you have a 1000 doesn't mean you're going to be smoke him on a bench press or a squat or a deadlift like the likelihood is quite high that you're going to get decimated by him even though his test levels are you know two-thirds or half of yours like that's just you know the genetic predisposition at the end of the day even though his test levels are normal as fuck like very average so anyways getting back to paul scholar uses this as a reference point of look i'm only 594 that's totally normal it's average but what he's leaving out is the gonadotropin levels. He's leaving out his lipid parameters. He's leaving out his SHBG, his free T. A lot of things that could otherwise be useful for kind of extrapolating and dialing in if this guy is indeed natural or not. So if he really wanted to make 
this post useful for making his case that he's natural, he would have at least shown his LH and FSH. Like you would think, I don't know, you would think if he's getting blood work on a regular basis, like that's a pretty standard thing to include on panels, especially for somebody who is otherwise wanting to assess their fertility metrics. You know, maybe he's not planning on having another kid or anything, but typically alongside your total T, you will be checking your gonadotropin output to see how you know, responsive you are at your testes to those gonadotropins and how much you're producing to begin with. It's just like a standard fertility metric that comes along with your endocrine parameters where you're doing your total T, your free T, your LH, FSH, SHBG, estrogen. Like these are basic things that are included in basic panels. So I'm kind of surprised that he would omit those results. And it certainly doesn't bold well in his favor because there are a lot of guys who could be on TRT and have, you know, almost 600 nanogram per deciliter totals or even just pull out T and craft your levels to fucking 268 or whatever he said it was on one of his other results. And you would have no idea they're on TRT if you don't look at the more insightful biomarkers that are indicative of negative feedback or lack thereof. So no LH and FSH, unfortunately not useful at all, Paul. This is not something that proves anything. Like it's, it's cool that you wanna be transparent and try and like prove that you're natural, but you're going to have to get more elaborate biomarkers assessed to be able to give yourself a more broad spectrum, I don't know, case that is, uh, you know, like this does fucking nothing to be honest. Like we would need to see gonadotropins on concurrently with this, with the other markers I mentioned that are of lesser importance, but in general, like gonadotropins, maybe if you wanted to get like a serum HCG to prove you're not artificially inflating it with an LH mimic, like these kind of things would help rule out a lot of haters and naysayers and uh, very easy to get, dude, very easy. So if he wants to go further with that, it should be interesting to see what happens. But for now, he is, uh, you know, he's obviously coming in full force for the fake nanny detective. He thinks he proved him wrong with this post. Unfortunately, did nothing of the sort. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad or good necessarily. I'm just giving the scientific rebuttal to this biomarker. It does not really indicate anything other than the fact that he's in the natural range. So that's it. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Some of these other comments are pretty spot on, like doesn't tell you shit. The odds his test would be that high at that age are 50-50. Tell him to post a testosterone to epitestosterone ratio. Um, somebody mentions here the carbon isotope ratio test as well. Like at the end of the day, oh, somebody here mentions, let's see, very difficult for someone on SOS TRT to have a high HDL. You could take a Zetamibe or a statin. The vast majority of people are going to struggle with maintaining HDL above 40 or 50 on TRT slash SOS without a drug to help that. Yeah, so that too, that's why I said lipid parameters earlier. Like that's not, like the gonadotropins are way more important to see, but if we could see his lipids too, you know, it's very difficult for a guy on exogenous test um, to maintain an HDL above 50, honestly. Like it's more, it's quite rare for a guy who is, you know, I guess many would speculate has been on testosterone for a while. So anyways, the, uh, I don't know what his HDL is, but he says here, totally healthy looking with natty test levels, but a random HDL of 30. I bet he's on something or was on something recently. I don't see where it says anywhere an HDL of 30. I guess maybe this blood work post had more stuff on it and maybe he scrolled down because this is a video. This is a screenshot of a video on its page, but I scrolled down. Maybe I'm fucking blind, but I could not, I could not find the post for the life of me. So I don't know, maybe I'm just not seeing it, but um, I scroll down. If somebody scrolls down and finds it and has more biomarkers to show, that'd be great. Maybe I'm just missing them because I'm just going off of this Reddit post. But if it was just this, you know, getting gonadotropins, lipids, et cetera, would be quite insightful, but mainly the gonadotropins to actually prove without a doubt that at that moment, you do not have a lack of, uh, or you don't have negative feedback causing a suppression of your hypothalamic signaling to the pituitary, which downstream leads to gonadotropin production to signal to your testes to produce testosterone. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Is Paul Scalar indeed natty or is he not? All the comments help the algorithm and are much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredays.com, follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredays, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. If you want to get high quality medical oversight and check your blood work, you can go to merrickhealth.com. You can go to our homepage here and go to the our services section and go down to blood work and labs to get your own panel assessed. Um, these are panels that I've audited myself and have the most up-to-date biomarkers based on the most cutting edge literature and the most sensitive of assays to actually assess your endocrine profile thoroughly and accurately rather than getting convoluted, you know, 
inaccurate as fuck. Immunoassays like estradiol. Like we have the base package, comprehensive package, complete package, and these are you know more and more elaborate and more and more cost prohibitive, of course, but at the more complete level, you have very, very insightful metrics into cardiovascular disease risk, into cancer uh, predisposition, a bunch of stuff that is uh, you know insulin resistant spectrums, not just your basic shitty you know hemoglobin A1C, fasting glucose. Like we actually have very, very insightful, cutting edge biomarkers in here, and the medical professionals to interpret these and educate you about them as well, and create a protocol if warranted. And that's not just pharmacology related, that is lifestyle intervention related, dietary manipulation related, sleep hygiene related. We do it all and um, we do not just haphazardly throw people on medications, rather we make the majority of our money off of the diagnostics and the actual consults and whatnot. So educating the patient is what we pride ourselves on as opposed to just throwing out a shit ton of prescriptions. And here, the most cost efficient lab test builder, if you just want to get your own biomarkers check, you know, you can just add a single biomarker and check out. You do not need to get a, you know, $500 panel or something. You can literally just get a, you know, add a lipid panel with LDL HDL ratio for four bucks and 75 cents. You can add in an estradiol standard if you don't mind, you know, a amino acid. You get a CBC with differential for fucking $4 and 50 cents. Like there is no other lab that is providing something where you can literally just filter through the fucking thing and pick out a specific, you know, even a high sensitivity LCMS, MS, total T and add it to your own custom panel and create it for yourself and check out easily like that. Every other lab builder that I've used in the past before I had my own company was just like, to get the markers you'd want, you'd have to buy like the right panel that was like 500 bucks that would have that one marker in it. And then you have to like shop through the fucking whole site and try and pick the panel that had the most markers you wanted and the least shit like you didn't care about. It was just, it was just dumb and inefficient. So this is the way of the future in my opinion. You can check it out it's in the video description below if you want high quality medical oversight or just access to high quality diagnostics. As well, if you want to support me, Gorilla Mind, Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode, Pre-Workout Formulas, I design myself from scratch, my recommended diet model for getting muscle and sports performance whilst being mindful of micronutrient intake and gut health, clothing company that sponsors me, my recommended uh, hair loss prevention products, anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.